hi guys welcome back to another vlog you guys i feel on a roll yeah i have a vlog that's supposed to go up today i have like two or three videos actually i think three videos or so or two that i've not even edited that will still go up and then i'm starting another vlog already so i'm just like bad guy bad guy <laughs> um you people already Hiya. know who this is we just finished filming our collaboration obviously before this vlog goes up that collab will be way up on the channel so yeah. make sure to watch it if you haven't if, you're, if you started this vlog and you're watching this vlog and you've not seen our collaboration please go and watch it go and watch it it's actually so much fun we had so much fun filming and can let you be in the bad influence that she is in my life it's carrying me to go and lick ghost to me and dominoes <laughs> <laughs> Custard and Domino's, uh, please. You see, who, how did this thing come about? I said I was perceiving Suya. Midway our sh um, filming, she said she's perceiving Suya. Oh my god, Domino's pizza. Uh, uh, next day I said, Oh, I'm with your ice cream. Uh -huh. yeah, pizza, so we are both, uh, uh, what's it, bad influence on each other. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to Domino's. I don't know if I vlog inside Domino's, but. I'm going to maybe shall maybe we're going to Domino's then from there. See, this girl here is supposed to go to the market to cook for her family, but no, I'm choosing to go and eat in Domino's. I'll come back and pretend like I did not eat anything. <laughs> and they'll they will sort themselves out one way or the other. There's always Indomie. Indomie is always an option. Anyways, um, I'll go to Domino's then uh now I'm going to pick up from school. Today is last day of school, you guys. Last day of school, but mm -hmm. let me even come and start crying here. Awesome. Anyways, welcome back to another vlog and Buckle up, let's go on this journey together. Why am I being too serious? Oh my Bella, god, you guys, I'll see you guys. Kelly, yo. Why are you shy? <laughs> uh, since when I have food on my mouth. No, since when you start being shy for the camera. <laughs> this is my ice cream. It's almost done. Okay, let's go. And a free one we got. Nobody's even touching it. There's pizza and chicken wings. You guys, it feels like just yesterday, Kobe, um, Kobe, it was Kobe's last day of school in December and I told you guys how he passed, he got A, B and D, I think he got one D, a bunch of C's actually and a bunch of B's, he didn't get any A last time because that was his first time in a new school, look at his face here, he's so cute and it's a new term and today is the last day of this term as well and I just collected Kobe's results, wait I have to show you guys this time around, no, no freaking kidding but can you guys see all these a's like kobe literally got a in every single subject i'm shocked like i mean i know he's capable of this but like last time he got a bunch of a's and b's you know last time it was it was a mixture of a's and b's and c's i don't even think he got any a last time actually it was just mostly b's and c's and d and i was so proud of him then so imagine how much proud i am right now that he got all a's and even his um this part where okay even this part where they grade like their like behavior and stuff like obedience maturity and a bunch of other things he's just got a's and b's there you guys can see yeah last time that part was a bunch of b's and c's so there's been a lot of improvement and i am so proud of this little man obviously last time i bought him one one car that cost me 10k that kobe doesn't even play with anymore because he's obsessed with cars this time around i don't even know what i'm going to buy for him for passing his exam i think i'll buy him two things i i think I'll i've always wanted to get him a lego set he doesn't have one but he had one but not anymore so i want to get him a lego set i know he's going to love that and i'll probably buy him another toy car that moves the remote or something because he just loves it and that his ipad i don't know if you guys can remember his tablet a few vlogs ago like january that he broke it out of anger i think i'm just going to repair it for him now he deserves it coco look at he deserves it he's so tired and he's so sleepy look at kobe that passed his exam where are you frowning, baby? Say hi, guys. What are you saying? Say hi, guys. Eh? Say hi, guys. He's saying the same thing over and over again, and I can't even understand what he's saying. I love you, Coco. Kiss mommy. I love you, baby. Good job, okay? Mommy has given you lipstick. Look. Mommy has given you lipstick. I love you, baby. I love you, Mama. Oh, I'm so proud of him. <sighs> so, guys, um, 
I'm just I'm so tired but I just need to get this off my chest this is a little bit of a rant but then again a little bit of an important discussion so please just hear me out and um, the last time I picked up this camera I think it was on Friday after I picked Kobe up from school like when I went to pick him from school he was a bit quiet but the teacher was like it's probably because he was I picked him up very late so he was like the second to last person to leave so he got sad that like the other students were leaving before him so I initially thought that that was the problem but then later that night I noticed that he was still too quiet like Kobe is a very noisy playful child so he was very very quiet so I just knew something was wrong and um, then his temperature started getting high and I just gave him like normal neurofin I give them this neurofin kit and um, I gave it to him then Saturday um, on Saturday I still watched him on Saturday I, like he would eat he would throw up then he was stooling and it was like very watery and I just knew definitely something is definitely wrong but then his temperature didn't really get too high so I blame myself I just I, I don't even know why I didn't take him to the hospital on Saturday but then came Sunday and I finally took him to the hospital and you know I didn't take him to the hospital that we normally go to I took him to one hospital near me first of all when we got there this is where my anger is like my anger with Nigerian hospitals Nigerian hospitals are just so whack and you can be fine and get to a Nigerian hospital and something we shall find a way to kill you there with the doctors and everybody around is i got to the hospital and you know kobe was weak he hadn't been able to eat he couldn't keep down food so when we got to the hospital the temperature was like 38 point something it was high but it wasn't the worst you know and you know they now said okay since he hasn't been eating that they are going to admit him or like watch him till the night and see like how things go so this was in the morning we stayed in the hospital all day they were watching him kobe they gave him drip and um you know gave him uh, some injections like they put, gave him in fact before they even ran tests they gave him antibiotics injection and malaria injection and um, they gave him through his iv which he has or he had on his hands well he still has it now and um then later on in the evening towards evening time kobe started playing so at some point they started the supposed in to help his fever and that really helped i feel like that made a whole lot of difference more than the um, paracetamol injection they were giving him because after that Kobe started playing he was jumping around he was on the fan and off in the fan just playing in the kids um, ward because where I think it was a room of like three people or so or four people but just jumping some people we were alone at first and some people came in later and um, Kobe was even making so much noise and the doctors uh, they checked him you know he was fine and okay we were not like okay fine we can at least go home then he'll come back the next day and continue his injections and they were like okay that's that's fine just for us to get home and uh, we go home very late in the night because they had an injection to take around 10 so we go home like around i think they gave me the injection around 10 30 then around 11 we got home um you know i tried to put kobe to sleep he slept off he was still just a bit tired but no he wasn't his fever wasn't high or anything then around one i just something just woke me up because he was sleeping right next to me so something just woke me up and i just checked kobe kobe was just shivering like I don't know how to explain like I know exactly how this shiver feels but I don't know how to explain it to you guys because it happens to me when I give birth like I can be under the duvet I'm shivering but I'm sweating so that was happening to Kobe but at the same time he was shivering but but I could feel like his temperature was very high like I could feel like keeping my hands close to him I could feel the heat coming from his body it was that bad his temperature was so high so we checked his temperature because we have the thermometer in the house and his temperature was like 41 and then at that moment once I just saw it and the fact that he was shivering I just got really scared I myself I started shaking I was so scared my sister was like Nello just calm down we have to get Kobe to the hospital and I, I remember even though he was shivering and the temperature was high I just knew that his temperature is high I need to give him at least a bath and try to calm his temperature down a little bit before we go to the hospital so I tried to give him the neurofin pain reliever for fever and everything and the moment he entered his mouth he just threw everything out and the last meal he ate that day was around six or so the food still came out like he just threw up all over our bed and at that point i even like i was so scared 
I carry Kobe, put him in the uh, shower, in the bathtub, not the shower, and I started pouring water on him. He was still shivering us as he was inside. Which was, like, I don't know how to explain this thing to you guys. It was that bad. I was shaking, Kobe was shivering, Francis was just calm and collected. We woke Uche up, Uche packed some things in the back for him, and then we set out to the hospital again. On getting to the hospital, you guys just had all the symptoms and everything that just said that was happening to Kobe. He was his fever was high for the one, he was shivering. This boy was clearly sick. Normally, if you bring a child that's sick to the hospital, I just believe that the first thing a doctor should do or the hospital should do is try to get his fever down because when a child's fever is that high, they can start convulsing. They were supposed to try to get his fever down but then we get to the hospital mind you this is the same hospital that we left like two hours before now like we left the hospital around 11 this happened around one so we literally left two hours before and they were like oh we have to wait and see the doctor all over again because we had to pay consultation fee it's not even funny but we francis at that point francis first of all when we got the doors were locked you know i guess security but then we stood outside for well over a minute or so kobe was still shaking and everything so that already got us annoyed and then they were like we have to wait and see the i'm like what are we seeing the doctor for we're going to see the doctor now for the doctor to still tell you guys to to insert something in to help his fever or to give him an injection like we literally just left this hospital assuming kobe was still here and his fever gets high you would have still given him something to calm his fever down. They were like, we have to see the doctor. I was like, what do you see the doctor? Is it not just for consultation fee? Like I know in America or every other country and probably different states in Nigeria as well. Or in fact, any hospital that is not that particular hospital is possible. I'm sure that when you come in, I know like I've been to the emergency stream in other countries and stuff. The nurses, they do everything in their power to calm uh, you down first they do everything in their power to make sure your temperature is uh, normalized to make sure that you're fine before they even call the doctor sometimes the doctors are not just take a woman in labor for example when you get in there the doctor is not even on duty most of the time the nurses or midwives or whoever is around will have to help you out and just um, take care of you basically before the time the doctor comes to the hospital so that's what we expected from this people and they refused it got so bad that it turned into an argument and we started shouting and then um and um the nurses were like that's not how things are done here i'm like what do you mean that's not how things are done how will i leave my house carry my son to the hospital and he will be in the hospital and you people will not attend to him if you don't want to treat him just tell me let me take him to another hospital we just needed them to give him something for his high fever at that moment and after all the arguments mind you this argument took a number of minutes so if something bad was going to happen to kobe it, it could have actually happened to him then at, at some point you're like this is not how we do it but let's just give it to him the shark came gave him prostamol injection to calm the fever down kobe was lying down and then um we're like doctor will still come and see us we're not we're not like okay so what's doctor doing now they said doctor is wait what did they say something about doctor is taking down some things we're like whoa was he taking down? We're here. He has not seen Kobe. Nothing has happened. You people gave him something to calm his fever down. Okay, fine. The doctor was supposed to come and do rounds in the, you know, how they do rounds in the hospital, visit every, everybody that is admitted. And just long story short, the fa doctor finally came in. And Francis was trying to tell the guy, two of us actually, two of us were just trying to tell him that whatever happened that night was so wrong. If a child who just left this hospital two hours ago is not even like it was his first time coming that day, he literally just left, that the best or the least they would have done was try to do something to calm his fever down first before, um, you know, every other thing. Because you cannot carry a dying child and you're still there telling stories and what exactly... What, there's nothing else he could have done for him at that moment apart from trying to calm his um, temperature down before now actually attending to him and this guy just um, as okay Francis was talking to him and I was trying to tell him something he now shot me out like madam can you stop talking let me hear your husband out you know that kind of thing and he said it in such a rude way and I'm just like you can't talk to me like that and Francis was not trying to tell him no you can't talk to her like that like we are this boy's parents we are both concerns concerned we have something to tell you and i feel like when he shot me out you know how like this nigeria nigerian men generally do that even women i've noticed it in a hospital whenever i go to the hospital with francis they would rather talk to him and, and explain things things to him as a man than to me as a woman it's just a thing i've actually noticed and that thing pisses me off so i'm just like you know francis has something to say i have something to say francis said his own i'm trying to say my own and you're shutting me out and you know 
the guy just started shouting at, at us because Francis tried to defend me. Just started shouting at us. And at that point, I brought on my camera. I'm going to insert some clips here right now. I brought on my camera. I told him, you're a doctor. In fact, that doctor even looked like a tout. I'm sorry, but he looked like once he came in, Francis was like, I hope this is not our doctor. I hope that this is somebody's friend. Like there's another person in that room at that moment. I hope this is his friend or something like the, the baby's father's friend or something it turns out he was our doctor look at you people just help me and see he looked so somehow and then he started shouting back say are you videoing me i'm like yes i'm videoing you wait you are videoing me i'm videoing you now just you're a you're doctor yes you're a doctor you're supposed to be treating my son you're shouting it's allowed even when it's it's a police station and the police yes i'm trying to talk you even shouted my name that's not how to talk to somebody that is not how to talk to somebody it's not how you're talking to us we are his parents you're working out you should, you should take an oath to save lives basically and that's not what you did here today you were just more concerned about consultation fee because that is the only reason they were pushing to see um, they were pushing us to see the doctor and mind you before we left that evening we already paid these people for the treatment Kobe was supposed to receive for three days so Kobe took because they made us pay obviously we can't just pay like they said they put him on the treatment for a number of days and said we had to pay so we already paid them 28,000 that 28,000 was supposed to cover his injections so it's not even like we've not paid it's not like what so why exactly did you want to collect that extra I think the um, consultation fee was 6,000 out of this 28,000 you were using cost of 6,000 to delay a child's treatment. The doctor started shouting. At that point, he broke into an argument and then he just walked out of you were like, okay, and just walked out of the room. Basically, the nurses, they were so unprofessional. Like, it was just very chaotic. At that moment, you know, I was just like, you know what? Let's just take Kobe back home because I don't even trust this doctor in the first place. I don't trust their treatment and I don't even trust the test that they did which I was still proved right later. So we carried Kobe back home, he got the injection, so his fever later calmed down. Then very early in the morning, we now carried him to the hospital that we normally go to. First to get there, they did everything, very proper hospital, obviously everything is done right. And they ran some tests, turns out, okay, in the other hospital, they ran some tests and told us, oh, Kobe has malaria, he has typhoid, he has, you know how every time a child is sick in this country is malaria and typhoid? And uh, when we got to our hospital that we go to now, um, they were like, oh, Kobe doesn't even have malaria parasites in his body, nothing like that. And that uh, he has um, some sort of infection. I can't remember the name right now. But, like, basically the treatment Kobe was getting in the first hospital we went, it wasn't even treatment for what was actually wrong with him. Because they even actually started treating him before they even ran the test. <sighs> They started treating him before they ran the test. It's different if they just gave him something to calm his fever down, then wait for the test results, which is what our hospital did they tried to calm his fever down then the test results took like few minutes like 30 minutes we waited for it then waited for his results to now know the next course of treatment and they found out that he didn't even have what they said he had in the other hospital so since then kobe has been in the hospital receiving treatments and um this is he went this this today is tuesday evening so i just got back from seeing francis and i we just got back and he's doing well i didn't even like i can't stay with him in the hospital he is um the kids are not allowed to stay with their parents because there's um it's just easier that way actually because um you know they just comply and they take treatments better i know how when children see their parents you know they you know they just tend to to be more cry 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 or <laughs> if that's the word <laughs> but um, yeah kobe's doing well now he's getting better i'm not particularly like in favor with this whole arrangement of the parents was staying with the child the first time this happened i remember crying it was so bad i didn't want to leave kobe alone but because i know how sick he got this time i was just like you know what whatever it will have to do to make him feel better so um yeah that's where he is now and this evening i didn't even enter his like enter to see him i was just looking at him through the door because i went in the morning and when i was leaving he was just crying i want to go with mommy i want to go with mommy so they were like it took like an hour to calm him down then he slept so now he's fine i was just playing there was 
um, there are two other people there on admission, so they have this playroom there. So they were all just playing in the playroom, you know? like he wasn't standing and playing, he was just sitting and just playing with toy cars on the table. It was still calm, but at least it's a bit better. And he hasn't had um, high temperature all day, so we're hoping that he will come back home to us tomorrow. He keeps asking of Kaito anytime I go, and I'm just so sad. The fact that like I don't have him in this house right now is just. It's just very very sad <laughs> I don't even want to start crying because I've been doing that a lot lately and um, but he's getting better and I'm just happy this past three days it's been very tough I've not been able to function well and I just yeah I just wanted to just tell this story just let it all out my anger with the first hospital I went to, which by the way the name of the hospital is ultimate specialist hospital something like that is in Port Harcourt don't go to that hospital if you like yourself because that hospital as my husband said it's just like a business center they're just there for the business you know like they don't i don't think they really really even know what they're doing or care about their patients they just care about their patients pocket you know so yeah it just wasn't a good experience it, it really really wasn't a good experience and i've heard stories like that you know i've heard stories that, like that where people will go to the hospital fine and by the time they delay in receiving treatment their condition actually gets worse sometimes some of them die or sometimes pregnant women and they're complaining they're not taking them very serious they're delaying telling them pay deposits and then at the end of the day they will lose the baby you know just stories like that and i feel like it's so wrong and we need to speak up when this kind of thing happens like that hospital i <laughs> see kaito <laughs> sweetheart come oh he pooped he wants to change diaper that hospital really really pissed me off I love you baby but I'm just happy Kobe is in better hands now and, <laughs> and they are taking better care of him Taka say bye get to drag my camera oh yeah go go and change your diaper let's He's running away. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so that is my rant. We need to just Nigerian hospitals. You guys need to do better. I know not every hospital is that bad, but you just need to do better. And I'm just happy that Kobe is a bit fine. This was just like a therapy session for me. I just wanted to let everything out and just discuss it. And now I have, I feel a lot better. I'm sure a lot of you must have had bad experiences with Nigerian hospitals. Please let me know. Let me not feel alone in this because I'm sure that this has happened to a number of people. Let me know what your own stories are and uh, this was supposed to be a vlog but at the end of the day i don't even know if this is still a vlog but because i think i just vlogged like two or three times and then could be got sick but i'm just going to end this vlog here because i have rambled enough um hope you guys are doing great and hopefully by my next vlog obviously by my next vlog could will be back home and happy and i i just want to say thank you to all of you I put out a post on Instagram like yesterday evening. I was just feeling bad and I was just like you guys sending your prayers for Kobe and over like 200 people messaged me back praying for Kobe. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in my next video.